Welcome to Matcam for Jewelry. In this lesson, we will cover 5-axis continuous strategy and specifically toolpaths from drive surfaces. If you have watched the previous videos, you'll know that two other kinds of strategies are indexed and rotary, both with their advantages and downsides. Index strategy allows you to cut from any angle and have a lot of freedom in how you approach your cutting. The downside is that it is up to you to cover your entire model with these various index strategies. If you leave something, it will not be covered. The advantage of rotary strategy is that as long as you can surround your model in a circular curve, then it will be fully covered in a one smooth full movement of your mill. The downside, of course, is that you do have to fit your model all entirely within that one cylindrical boundary. 5-axis simultaneous strategies are something of a hybrid between those two. They allow you to have a smooth continuous movement across many axes while not necessarily being restricted to a cylindrical boundary. To show you an example, let us look at the stop of a ring. As you can see, I've already added some supports here and have selected my model. When you look at this um, particular model, you will notice that some parts of it, these bezels in the center, face up and down, meaning that they can be easily cut with an index strategy. However, these bezels around the outside face outwards, each one at a slightly different angle. While this is doable using an index strategy, you'd have to realign your seaplane for every one of these bezels and then calculate your cut from the top, flip over the model and proceed to do the same for the bottom. This operation can be made much easier using our 5-axis simultaneous tools. So let's see how we do that. Once again, we've already selected our model. Let's go to our cutter section and select a cutter. If you have seen our previous videos, you will note that we create a different cutter for Five axis simultaneous operations than we do for our regular operations. And that is because our Mac 3 controller struggles to properly set the speed for five axis continuous operations. For some reason, it tends to slow it down considerably by a factor of about 10. So, to overcome that, I create a separate cutter that is roughly 10 times faster, as you can see it's 3000 instead of 300 millimeters, and use that whenever I am using, whenever I am calculating 5x two paths. Now that we have our cutter loaded, we can see that our model is positioned correctly for 5 axis cutting, and we can proceed to the next stage, which is creation or selection of drive surfaces. To cut, a uh, continuous 5-axis toolpath, we need to specify a drive surface, an open surface, not a poly surface, just a surface, such as this one, which will work kind of like a three-dimensional boundary for our model. It does not have to lie above or below our wax model, that's something that we can specify in the options, and if your model is smooth, you can actually even select a part of that model to be the control surface, the drive surface itself. In this case, we have rather complex poly surfaces in place, so we're going to use an independent drive surface. So, one more thing to keep in mind. As you can see, I have my back faces colored yellow and the front faces colored by whatever color of the layer that we have. This will be useful because our front of the face will be the part uh, where the bit will come down and process. The back face is obviously the opposite. So if your direction is for some reason reversed, make sure that it's facing the proper way before beginning your 5x toolpath calculations. Let's go to our 5 extra tab and click on select drive surface. Now you will see that we get this little overlay with an arrow pointing downwards. You want to make sure that you are 
seeing that arrow pointing downwards and not upwards, which would indicate the other approach, meaning from the bottom up, which you do not want in this case. So while it's pointing downwards, it doesn't really matter where you place your cursor as long as it's pointing in the correct direction. Click your mouse and you get this drive surface options dialog box. And now you can see why this particular drive surface does not have to lie exactly above or below the surface of or below your actual model. Here you can see we have the ability to specify height and a depth above or below a surface. In this case, we'll say for example, 2 millimeters above drive surface and 2 millimeters below drive surface. Lastly, we have another important factor to specify, and that is the max angle, as you can see here. This is the maximum angle of your fifth axis, and of course, it's very mill dependent. And also dependent on how far away from zero or from your chuck you have positioned your piece. The further away, the more of a bend or an incline or decline your angle can be. In this case, I would be comfortable with an angle of about 135 degrees. So that's what I'm going to specify. Now that we have chosen our drive surface options, we can hide the drive surface itself and proceed to go to 5 axis or tab and simultaneous 5 axis milling toolbar and select planar finishing. This is a familiar window for those of you who have watched other videos on 5 and 4 axis milling. But let's go over it again very briefly. Step over size allows you to specify the resolution of your wax model. Angle limit will determine the sharpness of an angle beyond which your calculation will stop and not go any further. This will allow you to avoid situations of water falling off of your model and cutting around it. Direction, parallel X or Y, determines which way your tool bit will travel, uh, either around this way or around this way. And toolpath join will specify how your individual cuts are joined. Let's click OK and calculate our toolpath. And here's our toolpath. As you can see, our starting point is here, and it proceeds in lines like this over to here. If you're wondering what the X and the Y refer to in our planar finishing, surface finishing dialog box, the X and the Y refer to the U and the V coordinates of a drive surface. These can be changed if necessary using the direction command DIR. Um, here you're able to either reverse or swap them. So if you're finding that instead of what you expect like the toolpath traveling this way, it's going this way for example, use the direction command to change your U or V and then you will be able to see the correct result. The direction command can also confirm that your surface is facing the proper way if you do not have the back face coloring option turned on. But before we proceed to any further discussions on this matter, let's do a preview to see exactly how this toolpath will look in our simulator. As you can see we start from that point of entry and not only are we rotating around our b-axis, our axis of revolution, we are also moving our a-axis as you can see by the change in numbers on the bottom. Let's accelerate this simulation and now you're able to see the effect of all five axis in motion. What this does is perform a cut that is always perpendicular 
to the drive surface that we specified. Meaning that as long as our drive surface correctly represents the direction which we want our bit to be in as we're traveling around the model, then you will get this very nice clean cut without the need to specify individual indexed areas and then be concerned about connecting them and making sure that there are no steps and so on and so forth. This calculation also tends to be quite a bit faster than the indexed operation or the rotary operation. And just like any other MATCAM toolpath, we are able to mirror it if we want to, to perform the same operation on the other side. To cut the other side, that is to say the underside of this particular model, we can do one of two things. We can either use the very same surface as before, but instead of having this as the back face, we'd have to flip it over. This can be accomplished using the direction command and choosing flip and pressing enter. And once again, if you have the back face coloring option enabled, you will see that it changes to your layer's color. Now, we can choose our select drive surface command and confirm that the arrow is pointing towards the direction which we want to go. Click and specify our options as before. Alternatively, we can create a separate surface that will cover this specific area. And that's an option I leave up to you. Um, it depends on how you want to have your workflow go. In the end, you should be able to end up a toolpath that to once again <clears throat> starts from the furthest point away from your holder and goes slowly towards it as it cuts. And as before, you can mirror these toolpaths just like any other toolpaths and save yourself half of the time or more in calculation. A couple of other things to keep in mind. First of all, our drive surfaces can be reconfigured by right clicking select drive surface button. We have, as you recall, clicked on this with a left mouse button and specified our various options. To reconfigure it, right click on this button and you will go back to your drive surface options and are then able to change, for example, the height or the depth below a surface, as well as the angle limit factor. And something you might want to keep in mind is that even though you can specify a considerable amount of uh, tolerance or variance uh, for your above and below distances, you want to keep these as close to your actual model as possible. So it makes sense to actually go in and look at how far away, for example, your distance is from the top and the bottom of the model. If you recall your cplane command, cplane from view, for example, this is rather easy to accomplish. So here we have 0.6 of a millimeter approximately, and going towards the bottom, we have approximately 3. So we know that. To cover our model to the bottom, we need a little bit more than we specified, and to cover it to the top, we need a little bit less. This is important because these options impact the speed of your calculation considerably. So you can, of course, specify, say, for example, 20 millimeters every way, but it will slow down your calculation. You don't really want to do that. Second, just like any other toolpath in MedCam, you can choose to recalculate it by using Recalculate Tool and selecting some point on this toolpath. 
which will bring up your planar finish and dialog box with all of the options that you've used to cut the path. Changing this will result in a different toolpath with your new options without having to either recreate the drive surface or reselect various options that you've done before. This only works, of course, as long as your original drive surface is still in existence. It can be hidden, but it still has to exist. So if you delete it, you can no longer make use of that option. That about covers drive surfaces and toolpaths calculated from them. Thanks for watching.